My dearly beloved in Christ, today's gospel narrates the story of one of two multiplication of loaves and fishes by our Lord. And one phrase that really strikes me is our Lord said to his apostles, I have compassion on the crowd. For behold, they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away to their homes fasting, they will faint on the way. I have compassion on the crowd. These words point out to us the tremendous love of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the tremendous compassion and love of Almighty God, the, the providence of God. And on many occasions our Lord speaks of this, how his Heavenly Father has such love for his creatures. And not only that, but even for the wicked. Like our Lord said, your Heavenly Father allows his sun to shine on the just and the unjust and for the rain to fall in the fields of the good and the bad. So God's mercy is beyond ability to reckon. His love and goodness and compassion is without measure. And if that be the case, how utterly ungrateful we are to offend him, knowingly to offend our loving Father, our Creator, our Redeemer, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, who loves us so much and again died for us. So we should look upon sin as an act of terrible ingratitude. But in this regard, I would like to share with you some sections of a wonderful book I'm currently reading, and it is called The Sinner's Guide by Venerable Louis of Granada. And Louis of Granada was a priest in Spain in the 1600s. He wrote a number of books, but was a renowned preacher. And he, this particular book primarily has to do with living a life of virtue. And people in the world think that, oh, you Catholics, if you're trying to live a good life, you must be miserable. And the very opposite is true. It is those in the world who are living lives of sin, who are constantly bothered by a remorse of conscience because of how they're living. And also the knowledge that they will one day have to render an account to Almighty God and will be condemned for their wicked life. They are the ones who are miserable. So it's an excellent book pointing out the, the rewards and the motivation for living a life of virtue. But this one particular chapter is entitled, The Folly of Those Who Defer Their Conversion. People who say, I know I have to change my life, and I will, but not today, tomorrow, or later. It is like St. Augustine, if you've ever read his book, The Confessions of St. Augustine. He knew that he must amend his life or he would lose his immortal soul. And he wanted to. But he found the passions and those vices that he had given into so, for so long pulling him down. And he kept saying, Later, Lord, later I will abandon the world in sin. But finally he had the grace to do so. St. Gregory tells us, God promises to receive the repentant sinner when he returns to him, but nowhere does he promise to give him tomorrow. St. Caesarius thus expresses the same thought. Some say, in my old age, I will have recourse to penance. But how can you promise yourself an old age when you, your frail life cannot count with security upon one day? So God gives us today, and we must make use of today, and not put hope in some future time when we know not we shall even be alive. So use the time that God gives you now. St. Bernard says, when vice is confirmed by habit, it cannot be extirpated except by a very special and even miraculous grace. Therefore, there is nothing which a Christian should dread more than a habit of vice. Because like other things in this world, vice claims prescription. And once that is established, it is almost impossible to root it out. The longer a vice 
has been allowed to remain, the harder it is to overcome it. Another quotation here from this book, Can you doubt that you only increase the difficulties of your conversion by deferring it? Do you think that the more numerous your crimes, the easier it will be to obtain a pardon? Do you think that it will be easier to effect a cure when the disease will have become chronic? And he quotes here from the book of Ecclesiasticus, A long sickness is troublesome to the physician, but a short one is easily cut off. So not, do not allow a vice to develop. And if a vice has developed, conquer it immediately, not in the future. He tells a story here about a holy solitary in the desert who was taught this lesson by an angel. And the angel led him out into a field, and he saw there in the field a man gathering sticks, gathering wood in the field. And he gathered a big bundle, but finding the bundle he had collected too heavy, the woodman began to add to it. And perceiving that he was still less able to lift it, he continued to add to the quantity, imagining that he would thus carry it more easily. The holy man, wondering at what he saw, the angel said to him, Such is the folly of men who, unable to remove the present burden of their sins, continue to add to it sin after sin, foolishly supposing that they will more easily lift a heavier burden in the future. The folly of those, again, who defer and add to the burden of sin more and more sins. He gives here another quote, and this is from the book of Job. And Job is talking about how vice becomes such a part of man, second nature, we say, that habit is second nature. And sinful habits, bad habits, even as Job puts it, enter into the bones, meaning they become a part of man. Such that, he says, the bones of the sinner shall be filled with the vices of his youth, and they shall sleep with him in the dust. But let us suppose that you will not be disappointed, that you will live long enough to do penance, and that you will one day amend your life. Is it not foolish to waste and squander the time you have now? He quotes here from St. John Climacus, who says that we can scarcely atone for the faults of each day by the good works that we perform that day by your prayers, your penances, obedience to the commandments, reception of the sacraments, you can scarcely keep up with the sins and the faults you daily commit. Because it says in Scripture that the just man falls seven times. And if that be the case, how foolish, again, to waste the time we have right now. Another reflection in the same vein is that by your good works, you are storing up merit for heaven. You are determining the place you will have in heaven. How foolish then to waste the time you have right now when you could be earning a higher place in heaven, squandering the precious time that God gives you right now. He says here, let me call your attention to the foolish choice you make in selecting old age as a time for repentance and permitting your youth to go by fruitlessly. What would you think of a man who, having several beasts of burden, put all the weight of his luggage upon the weakest of these animals, letting the others go unloaded? Greater is the folly of those Christians who assign all the burden of penance to old age, which can hardly support itself, and who spend in idleness the vigorous years of youth, Seneca has admirably said that he who waits until old age to practice virtue clearly shows that he desires to give to virtue only the time of which he can make no other use. And when one is old and perhaps his senses and health are failing, how will he be able to adequately do penance and atone and amend his life? So do not put off for tomorrow what should be done right now. 
I mentioned the quote of St. John Climacus. He says, A man can with difficulty satisfy each day for the faults he commits that day. Another quotation here, and this one is from the book of Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament. I won't read the entire quote, but the writer says, Remember thy creator in the days of, y of thy youth before the time of affliction comes and the years draw nigh. And he says, when man shall enter into the house of his eternity, when his friends shall lament and mourn for him, and when dust shall return to the earth whence it came, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. So we will one day enter into the house of our eternity, as the Holy Ghost puts it here in Holy Scripture. So remember that end. Remember it now. Remember thy creator in the days of thy youth before the time of affliction comes. Use the precious time you have now. And don't be among those fools who defer their conversion, promising themselves that one day they will change their life. Why not now? Why not now? One last quote. Defer not your repentance until old age, when virtue will seem a necessity rather than a choice, and when it may be said that your vices have left you rather than that you have left them. Remember that old age is generally what youth has been. For as the sacred writer says in the book of Ecclesiasticus, how shalt thou find in thy old age the things thou hast not gathered in thy youth? And we likely will continue to be the type of person we are right now. So use the time you have to love and serve God as he deserves. Tomorrow, we celebrate the feast of a wonderful saint, St. Mary Magdalene. And our Lord said of St. Mary Magdalene, many sins are forgiven her because she has loved much. She has loved much. Let us strive to love God much. And you'll note in the life of St. Mary Magdalene, tradition tells us that she was left on a ship without without a sail, with, or with, without rudder, rather, without a rudder. She and her brother Lazarus and St. Martha and, and other early Christians, and that this ship was just put out to sea and it landed at Marseille in southern France. And that's, in fact, where the relics of St. Mary Magdalene are. When you can go there and be, visit her relics. And they have the cave in which she did penance for the rest of her life. She believed some 20 to 30 years more after this incident when she was left adrift in this boat and perhaps miraculously landed in southern France. She did penance for the rest of her days. Again, there is the cave in which she lived and prayed. And indeed, she loved God much. She amended her life. She used the grace of conversion that was given to her when she heard our Lord. She repented and she changed her life completely. And that is why she is one of the greatest saints in heaven and a good model for us to use whatever time remains for us in loving and serving God, loving him much, as our Lord said of her, and not be so foolish as to put off and put off an amendment of life. Use the time that God gives you now. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.